let's go ahead and get into that. And none are on the board. Oh, yeah, there's one. Uh, I'm talking about Moorhead at UConn, 7 o'clock tip off. Uh, UConn's minus 12, totals 148, 76% leaning toward UConn, 60% shaded toward the under. And at the moment, Moorhead is plus 620 for an upset, outright victory. Now, it's going to be tough sledding for you. You're probably going to have to sweat this one out because Moorhead is just 5-15 and 15 straight up in their last 20, dating back to last season. 0-5 oh, straight up in their last five away from home. This Moorhead defense gave up 83 points per contest on the road last season. Meanwhile, they're going up against a UConn team who's, uh, who went 11-7 and 7 straight up on their home court last year. Uh, they put up 70.3 points per contest at home last year. And total-wise... I, uh, I kind of like UConn to light up the scoreboard here tonight. So I'm going to make the chalky play here. Give me UConn minus 12 in the over 148 in this one. Next game, Siena at George Washington. 7 o'clock tip off at G-Dub. George Washington's minus 7 totals 139 62% are leaning George Washington. And at the moment, Siena is plus 260 for some money line cash. Now, George Washington... They failed to cover in five out of their last six, dating back to last year. Two and four straight up in that very same category. Meanwhile, on the other side, Siena successfully covered the number in their lone game for the season. That was a tough loss to Providence, and they actually made that game fairly competitive. Uh, they did lose by 10, but, you know, that had all the makings for a, a blowout there. And uh, total-wise, both teams are 1-0 and to the over so far for the season. So with all that said and done, I think I'll take a little underdog action here. Give me Siena plus 7 in the over. 139.5 in this one. All right, and that's going to bring me to my next and final game for college basketball. It is going to be Evansville taking on the Fighting Illini. 8 o'clock tip-off in Illinois. The Illini. Our minus 14, totals 147, 66% leaning toward Illinois, 53% shaded toward the under. And at the moment, Evansville's plus 825 for some money line cash. Now, if you didn't know, Evansville, uh, their mascot is the fighting, or excuse me, Evansville is known as the Purple Aces. Uh, and Evansville went 17 and 15 straight up last season, 17 and 11 against the spread in qualifying games. There were also 8-5 and five ATS in their games away from home last year. They're taking on an Illinois squad who finished the season 14-18 and 18 straight up, just 12-16 and 16 against the spread, and 2-7 and seven straight up in their last nine dating back to last year. This Illinois, uh, Illinois defense also gave up 74 points per contest last year. And total-wise, uh, I'm really just not sure that Evansville can move the ball fast enough. I don't know if they can move fast enough, score fast enough. So I'm not anticipating a whole lot of points in this one. That said, though, I do like Evansville to cover. Give me Evansville, plus 14, in the under, 147 in this one. All right, that is going to bring me to NHL action. And we got a pretty big slate here tonight for NHL. So let me just get those notes ready for that. All right. The Coyotes travel to Philly to take on the Flyers. 7 o'clock puck drop in South Philly. The Flyers are minus 160, total 6. Arizona's plus 140 for some money line cash. And at the moment, Philly's plus 190 for some puck line cash. Now, Philly's given up 4.3 goals per game at home. Just 2-4 and four straight up in their games on their home ice. Philadelphia's also failed to cover in 5 out of their last 6 puck lines. Uh, at the Wells Fargo Center. Meanwhile, on the other side, Arizona's 5-1 and one straight up in their last six, 4-2 and two straight up in their last six, taking on the Flyers. Arizona's playing some really good defense right now. They're giving up just 2.3 goals per game on average away from home. And total-wise, both teams went 9-1 and one to the over in their last 10 head-to-head -head meetings. So we should have some fun tonight. I'm liking Arizona. Um, handling the the flyers thoroughly even as the uh, significant underdog so give me arizona plus 140 in the over six goals in this one uh next game that is going to be edmonton florida we're right on it edmonton florida seven o'clock puck drop in florida the panthers are minus 140 total six 68 percent are leaning florida 59 percent shaded toward the under Edmonton's plus 120 for some money line cash. And at the moment, Florida's plus 220 for some puck line cash. Now, Florida's just 3-4-3 three, and three straight up in their last 10, taking on Edmonton. Florida's also 0-3-1 oh, 
in their games at home this season, and they have not covered a puck line at home yet this year. Meanwhile, on the other side, the Oilers, 5-3 and three straight up in their last eight. They're also 5-0 and oh straight up in their last five in Florida. Now, total-wise, Florida's 2-1-1 one one to the over in their games at home. Edmonton's 5-3-1 and one in their games away from home. So with all that said and done, I'll take another underdog in this one. Give me Edmonton plus 120 in the over. Six goals in this one. Next game, Canucks, Bruins, 7 o'clock, Boston. The Bruins are minus 245, totals 5.5. 59% leaning toward Boston, 52% shaded toward the under. Vancouver's plus 210 for some money line cash, and at the moment, Boston's plus 120 for some puck line cash. Now, if you like Boston on the puck line, just keep in mind they're going up against a Vancouver team who's 4-1 against the spread in their last five, 5-2 five ATS in their last seven on the road. Vancouver's also 4-2 in their last six puck line plays, taking on the Bruins. Meanwhile, on the Bruins side, they've dropped two out of their last four straight up. Uh, but those two wins that they gathered in those four games, they were just one goal victories. All right, This Boston defense, pretty stingy. They are giving up just 1.6 goals per game on their home ice. And uh, they're 10-4 and four to the under overall for the season. Vancouver, very similar story. They're 7-2 and two to the under in their games away from home as well. So with all that said and done, really bad game to play in my opinion. Um, not a whole lot of equity on the sides, but um, it's a pick show, so i got to lean somewhere. I won't take a pass or leave you high and dry. So give me Vancouver plus 1.5 for some very pricey puck line cash. Very bad equity. And the under, 5.5 in that one. All right, I'm looking for the Sabres here. There we go. Sabres, Canadians, 730 puck drop in Montreal. Montreal is minus 135, totals 5.5, 52% leaning toward Buffalo, 60% shaded toward the under. Buffalo is plus 120 for some money line cash. And at the moment, Montreal is plus 215 for some puck line cash. Now, Montreal is 7-2-1 in their last 10, taking on Buffalo, 4-1 straight up in their last five in that very same category. Montreal is also 13-6 and six on the puck line in their last 19 games, 8-3 uh, and three ATS in their last 11 at home. Meanwhile, on the other side, the Sabres are just scoring 2.6 goals per contest away from home. Buffalo is also just 3-4-1 and one on their games on the road, 1-4 and four straight up in their last five in Montreal. And total-wise, Montreal is 5-3 and three to the under so far for the season. Got to make the chalky play in this one. Give me Montreal, minus 135 in the under. 5.5 in this one. All right, we're looking Islanders here. There we go. Next game, Islanders. Lightning, 730 puck drop in Tampa Bay. Tampa's minus 220, total 6. 73% leaning toward Tampa Bay, 60% shaded toward the under. New York's plus 190 for some money line cash. And at the moment, Tampa's plus 135 for some puck line cash. Now Tampa's 5 and 1 against the spread in their last 6 at home, 8 and 2 in their last 10 puck line plays taking on the Islanders. They're also giving up just 2.3 goals per game on average on their home ice. Now the Islanders completely different story. They're just 1 and 9 straight up in their last 10 taking on Tampa. The Islanders also uh, failed to cover in 4 out of their last 5 puck line plays in Tampa Bay. Now, total-wise, Tampa's 5-3 and three to the under in their games at home this season. Give me Tampa, minus 1.5 on the puck line, and the under, six goals in this one. All right, let's flip the page as we cover our next couple of games here. And I'm looking for Golden Knights. There we go. Uh, next game, Golden Knights uh, at Ottawa, 7.30 puck drop in Ottawa. The Golden Knights are minus 160, totals 5.5, 52% are leaning Vegas, 63% shaded toward the over. Ottawa's plus 145 for some money line cash, and at the moment Vegas is plus 185 for some puck line cash. Now if you like Vegas as the heavy chalk in this one, just keep in mind, they're 2-6 and six straight up in their games away from home. They're scoring just 1.7 goals per game on offense. Uh, Vegas has also dropped three out of their last four and five out of their last seven. Really struggling after that uh, Stanley Cup uh, hangover, uh, making it to the Stanley Cup, finishing runner-up. Now, the 
Senators on the other side, they're two and two straight up in their last four, four and two ATS in their last six. Ottawa's also six and one ATS in their last seven on their home ice. And total wise, a lot of overs uh, on this.